Uh, so, so we are done with 50% of the syllabus. Uh, it took more than half the time for the full uh, uh, for the full semester. I think nine, we're nine weeks through the semester. Turns out that the last four chapters will be done very quickly. It's more like one chapter per week. Uh, but it's not it's not uh, that long. It's just short uh, three three uh, sessions per chapter something like that. So what we're going to do today is um, another way of solving dynamics problems, and this is using the concept of uh, energy balance. And uh, what you can the way you can think of this is you can either use uh, Newton's laws equations of motion and integrate, or you can just use the energy to find. Uh, things you're interested in, like velocities, positions. However, if you want things like acceleration, you do need to use new equations of motion, Newton's laws. If you need the forces too, you need to use the equations of motion. So this doesn't mean that you don't have to draw free body diagrams for this problem, as you see. You absolutely need to draw free body diagrams. So uh, I'll start with the concept of work done, and then uh, I'll talk about energy, kinetic potential energy, and then we'll solve some problems related to that. Okay, so uh, work done by a force, uh, du is, say, the work done, is simply the dot product of the force times the displacement or the distance moved. Distance traveled, F is the, it's the external force to the system, force or the force applied. And this fellow here is the dot product. Okay, uh, just like the scalar, the cross product, you have a dot product, which takes two vectors and multiplies the components of the vectors in the same way. So if it's if f has f x, f y, f z, and uh, d r has r x, r y, r z, you have to multiply f x with r x, f y with r y, f z with r z, and sum the thing. Uh, so when you have a dot product, what you get is a scalar, right? That's a number. It's not a vector. So uh, if you want to find the work done when a force moves a, a particle from 1 to 2, all you have to do is integrate f dot dr from R1 to R2. Okay, there's another way you can interpret F dot dr. F dot dr is the dot product. So what you can do is you can write F dot dr as the magnitude of the force times the magnitude of the displacement of the distance covered times the cosine of the angle between f and r. So f dr is a vector, f is a vector, uh, then the angle between the two is theta, then uh, this f dot dr is simply the magnitude of f times magnitude of dr times the cosine of the angle between the two. Okay, I'll illustrate this with this simple 1D examples. Okay, the problems you see are typically two dimensional in this, in this particular section, but I'll illustrate f dot dr in simple examples in one dimension. So F is applied uh, in this direction. DR is, as the motion of the particle is in the same direction, then F dot U12 is F times R2 minus R1, right? And this 
for the work done is positive because the force and dr or the displacement in the same direction okay now if a force is applied leads to a displacement in the opposite direction to the application of the force then u12 would be minus f r2 minus r1 so a case where this would happen is imagine a a the a body is is accelerating and there is a friction force which prevents it from well, it slows it down so that force friction force in the direction opposite to the motion of the particle in that case the work done is going to be negative so here is a uh, a simple 2d example illustrating the dot product if you have a particle on the ground it's acted upon by let's say a normal force and then dr is the displacement is in the in the horizontal direction then the work done is what what's the work done by the force n it's zero because because n dot dr is magnitude of n magnitude of dr times cosine of what's the angle between n and dr it's 90 degrees so that is simply zero that clear okay uh, let me write down a few well two things more about work done by gravity that will come again and again in this class and work done by spring force so work done by gravity okay so the particle is falling under gravity so the gravitational force on the particle is mass times gravity and uh, our convention usually is y upwards is positive right x to the right is positive y upwards is positive so u12 is f dot dr f is let me just write it down f dot dr so f is mg and mg acts in the direction opposite to the positive y axis so that's negative times dr so that's going to be dy and dy is positive so 1 to 2 will give me minus mg y2 minus y1 or in other words when uh, if if the particle has motion upwards when the force of gravity acts is downwards then the work done is negative so when uh gravity acts downwards while displacement is upwards then u12 is is negative okay and and vice versa if the particle is falling in the same direction as the direction of gravity the work done is going to be positive other thing is work done by a spring okay so a spring it's stretched in this direction let's call the stretch as s and the spring force when you stretch a spring it always tries to restore the spring back to its original position so its original position unstretched position is let's say that this is the unstretched position so since the 
force in the spring always tries to get it back to its neutral or the original position, the force of the spring is going to be in that direction. Okay? It's going to be exactly opposite if the spring was instead compressed. So if the spring was, if this point here was over here, then the, the, the force in the uh, spring would try to stretch it. So it will be in the direction opposite to what I've shown here. U12 is Fs ds. And the expression for the force in a spring is k times s times ts. This is dot product. But uh, in, in, since, since, uh, since ds is positive, f is ks acts in the direction opposite to ds. I'm going to write a negative sign here because the direction of this and this is exactly opposite to each other. And so S1, S2 will give me minus half K S2 square minus S1 square. Okay, so the final thing before we start solving problems is there is a principle and this is a principle which we will apply again and again in this chapter in order to solve problems. So this is getting uh, the energies and work done together. So it's called the principle of work and energy. Okay, the principle states that uh, the Okay, so the principle goes as this T1 plus U12 is T2. What's T1 and T2? Well, T1 is, T is the kinetic energy. So T1 is going to be half mv1 square. T2 is half mv2 square. Okay, so what it's saying uh, is that if a uh, an object or a particle has a certain kinetic energy, one, and you do some work on it, the sum of the work done plus initial kinetic energy will be equal to its final kinetic energy. Okay? So in order to, in order to sol use this for solving problems, what you need to do is uh, find the kinetic energy before, find the energy after the application of force, and then find the work done due to the force. How do you find the work done? Well, I've given you uh, work done due to spring, work done due to due to uh, a, a particle falling under gravity. Those are the things which you need in order to find you want to. So this is the formula which gets, which really helps you to solve problems because what we're interested in in the motion of particles. So what, what's happening at, we only look at what's happening at one instant and another instant and use that fact to find things like velocities, positions, and so on. So this will be clear once I solve problems. So to summarize, uh, the way this goes in problem solving is, uh, okay, so here's the recipe for solving problems. First is draw the free body diagram, like always. Uh, write the equations of motion. Now, when you write the equations of motion for this part, you only would write them if you are interested in finding the forces. Why do you need forces? Well, you need forces because without forces, you cannot find the work done. Work done requires you to find forces. So do this only if you want to find forces. Once you find the forces, you can then use the principle of work and energy. The forces will come right here, you want to. And this is, as you know, is the kinetic energy.
Okay. And then once you find that, if you want to find uh, velocity, acceleration, or S, you can do it by either using two or three. Two would give you forces or accelerations, and this one will give you the velocities because the principle of work and energy does not have accelerations in it, right? T has kinetic energy, so it's, it has velocities. U12 has, um, it usually has distances in f dot ds or mgy, so it doesn't have acceleration anywhere in this. So you will not be able to find acceleration from this. So for acceleration, you have to use two, and for velocity, you can use either two or you can use two or three, two or three. S two or three. You could integrate accelerations to get velocities and displacement, or you could use the principle of work energy. This will be clear once you solve problems. Um, and these are some things which I already mentioned. Uh, when F and dr are in the same direction, it's, so it's very important to have the sign right because if you don't have the sign right, you'll get wrong answers. Okay? When F and dr are in the same direction, work done is positive. When F is acting in one way, direction of motion is the other way, work done is Negative, when a particle is falling under gravity, if it falls in the direction downwards, then the work done is positive. It's going upwards under gravity is negative. And then spring force is always half Ks2 minus S1 squared. So let's put all these things together in some problems. So here's the first problem. OK, so one of the students told me that 5 mg is is basically milligrams, right? So this is megagrams, 10 raised to 6 grams, which is 5 into 10 raised to 3 uh, kilograms. So it's 5,000 uh, kilograms, which means it's 5 tons. Okay. So that was a big mystery to me. I, I don't know why you want to uh, give the weight of things which are so heavy in megagrams you would rather be better off giving in kilograms anyway so that's uh, so let's let's start on this problem so design considerations for the bumper b this is the bumper b on the 5 megagram no, sorry yeah megagram train car require use of a non linear spring having the slow deflection characteristics shown in the graph so this is going to be the force displacement profile of i don't know if you can see Apparently, there's a spring here, okay? And that spring has this kind of force displacement profile, okay? So it's a nonlinear spring because usually the force displacement profile is a straight line. The, the expression I wrote some time back, that was a linear spring, so it would have a slope of k. Uh, this one has a nonlinear slope because its force is ks squared. Select the proper value of k so that the maximum deflection of the spring is limited to 0.2 meters when the car traveling at 4 meters per second strikes the rigid stops. So neglect the mass of the car wheels. So this thing is traveling at 4 meters per second. That's when this thing, the bumper B, is in contact here. Okay. After that, what happens is the spring compresses itself and stops in uh, 0.2 meters, OK? So you got to find what is that spring constant k, which will ensure that the, the train would stop in 0.2 meters when it's traveling initially at 4 meters per second. Is that clear? OK. so. What we have to do is uh, follow the recipe, which is essentially first draw the free body diagram. Okay, so the train has a normal force a force due to gravity and then what what else the spring, the spring force the spring force is like this uh, is there friction yeah. 
No, I don't think they mention friction. So let's assume there's no friction. Okay, now the question is, uh, what do we do next? Well, the second thing is to write equations of motion. You write the equations of motion when you want to find the, the forces. In this case, um, well, we don't really need n in this case, where n is mg. And uh, we do need fs to find the work done, but uh, we know what fs is. So really, there's no point in writing the equations of motion here. Don't need it. Okay. So we'll directly apply principle of work energy. Okay. Perhaps it's a good idea to first think of principle of work and energy and see what you write there. And if you think that you're missing a force, then start looking at equations of motion. So principle of work energy says that T1 plus U12 is T2. So the kinetic energy initially is half mv1 square. Uh, U12 is the work done by the spring force, right? And let's see what that is. So the work done by a spring force, so I'm just turning back to the place where I wrote the work done by a spring force. So the work done by a spring force is minus k here it is, minus ks times ds, so it's rather fs ds, okay? So that's what I need. So work done by the spring force is f s ds. Now I need to be careful about the sign. Let's see the direction of ds. Now ds, our convention is going to be S is positive this way. In fact, the car actually travels to the right. Okay, so S is positive. What about FS? It's acting in the other direction. So S is to your to your right, and FS is to your left. So the net work done due to force acting in the direction opposite to the displacement is going to be negative. So this force here is negative. Or what you could do is just think of S is in the j in the i direction and fs is in the negative i direction so that this product is going to be negative and so uh, it's minus fs ds and i need to take the integral so minus fs ds so this is because fs is opposite to s Okay. And what's the final kinetic energy? Zero. It's zero. So it comes to stop in point u meter. So that's going to be zero. Okay. So that's that. Let's try to put uh, numbers in. The mass is 5,000 kilogram. So 5,000. The initial velocity is 4 meters per second. That's four square minus the fs fs is minus well i already put the minus sign so it's k s square it's k s square because they told that the spring characteristic behaves like a non-linear spring and then ds equal to zero i'm missing is the integrals so the s is going from uh, zero to 0 0.2. So it's stretched by 0.2. It comes to stop in 0.2 meters. That's assuming that this is 0. The initial position is 0 when it's unstretched, and then it's, it, uh, it's compressed by 0.2. So that's that. Uh, this gives me half times 5,000 into 16 equals, I'm moving to the other side k times s cube divided by 3. I'm integrating s square 0 0.20. So it's k 0.2 cube divided by 3. And uh, in, right in this equation, there is just a single unknown k. And if you solve for k, k equals 15 times 10 raised to 6. Okay.
question, what's the, what's the units of K? Are you sure? Yeah, that's that's the that's the spring constant if f equals k x, right? What's the units if it's f equal equals k x squared? Right, newtons per meter squared. Okay, so why newton per meter squared? It's because f is k s square so if you the units of f is newton uh, uh, you want to find the units of k let's keep it as it is the, the units of s is meters so meter square so k has to be newton per meter square in fact uh, one thing i want to tell you is when you write equations okay equations of motion it's always a good idea to check the units your left hand, the units on the left hand side, right hand side should be the same. Many times, when for the tutorial session, I've seen people write equations which are dimensionally inconsistent. It's like equating apples to oranges. When you have an equation, the units on the left hand side should match the units on the right hand side. That's a very simple check to ensure that your equations are right or wrong. Okay, any, any questions on this? Okay. Moving on. Okay, let's solve this problem. An 8 kg block, 8 kg block is moving with an initial speed of 5 meters per second as shown here. If the coefficient of kinetic friction, okay, so this is a problem where there is friction. So this surface has kinetic friction of 0.25. Find the compression in the spring when the block momentarily stops. Okay, so what's happening in this problem is that block, the way it is showing, is moving at five meters per second to the right. Okay, uh, some point of time it touches the spring at A. Okay, and the block is slowed down by, of course, friction. But then it still has some velocity when is it when it is at A, and now it acts against the spring, and the spring tends to push it back to its uh, spring tends to stretch back to its original position, which is A. So there's a force which sort of retards the motion of the block. And some point of time between A and the wall, the block B comes to a rest. You got to find the compression of the spring when that happens. So you got to find. So this is how the spring is going to be when the block hits. So you got to find how much the compression is. So let's call that X. Let me just redraw this. Okay, so now the block has come to rest. Uh, this is A. This is the new position. So this thing, let's call it X. This distance is X. Okay, you got to find X when block B is at zero velocity. Okay, so again, same thing, same recipe. Draw the free body diagram. Okay, there is a normal force which uh, acts in the upward direction is mg. Okay, what else? Okay, now one one suggestion is uh, when you when you think you suspect this is a problem involving principle of work and energy, you are really interested in two instances of time or three instances of time, the initial, middle, or final. In this case, you're interested in the initial position, which is the way it is right here. You're interested in the final position, okay? And uh, you want the forces in both the positions, so. You, you have to draw basically a free bar diagram on both those cases unless you suspect that those free bar diagrams are the same. So FBD, 
this is the initial FBD. Okay, this is when the block is at this position as shown in the figure. Uh, what's the force? What are the other external forces acting on the block when it's right here? So there's friction force. It's going to be opposing the motion. So that's going to be F S. Sorry, I shouldn't use that notation. Let me use F S. Okay, that's that's it, right? Finally, when the block is coming to rest or when it's in contact with the spring, okay, uh, it will still be a mg and n, okay. But uh, in addition to the friction force, there will also be a spring force. So uh, the only reason why you might want equations of motion are to find FF, but that's really not a, uh, let me just write it, equations of motion. So the only thing we need from the equations of motion is to find the friction force because uh, the motion of this block is in the x direction. So the only work which is done by this uh, force is, is due to FS and FF. Since n is normal to the direction of motion, the work done by n is going to be zero. So we are interested in FF and FS. FS is known, it's k times s, at k times x or k times s, whatever you like to call it. And FF is unknown, we need to find that. So FF we know is mu k times n, and from Newton's laws, Fy is May, we get the net force is n minus mg, equals the acceleration in the y direction is zero. So let's call this x this y. So that's zero. So FF is mu m g. Okay, so we got the force. Now let's use principle of work and energy. T1 plus U12 equals T2. The initial kinetic energy is half mv1 square, where v1 I'll, I'll sub in a little later. The work done is, is due to two things. One is due to FF over here. I'll call it FF1, FF2. That's easier. FF1 is going to be uh, FF1 times 2, right? Because this distance is 2. There will be FF2. Okay, my bad. Uh, FF1 acts in the direction opposite to the displacement, right? 2 meters, it goes to the right. The particle moves to the right, and FF acts opposite. So it's going to be negative FF1 times 2, negative FF2 times x, right? The work done when uh, from from the point it starts making contact till the full compression. Uh, the work done by the spring is only occurring once it makes contact. So that's going to be, remember it was half, minus half k times s2 square minus s1 square. So that's going to be minus half k times x square minus zero square. Because the final position is x, the initial position is zero. Uh, the final kinetic energy is zero. Okay. FF1 is mu k times mg. This is mu k times mg. Uh, k is known, I believe, k is 200. The mass is 8 kg. And V1 is, is 5. That's 5. So everything in this equation except x is known. So what do you, you end up getting is a quadratic equation. You see there's an x square and there's an x. So you get a quadratic equation. 
in x and once you solve it you'll get two roots turns out that one root will be will have absolute nonsense it will be something like a negative value or uh, you can ignore that the other root is the answer it's 0.6875 meters okay so you might want to go and solve this because i don't know if you remember how to solve a quadratic equation okay is that is that clear any questions okay this last problem i don't know if i can have the time to go through the whole thing but let's let's give it a shot okay so two blocks a and b have weights wa 60 lb 60 lb and 10 lb this is 10 lb if the kinetic friction I'll write it down 60 lb 10 lb if the kinetic friction between the incline and the block is there is some kinetic friction here determine the speed of a after it moves 3 feet down so it moves 3 feet down the plane starting from rest it starts from rest okay neglect the mass of the cords and pulleys so what's happening is this thing is let go uh, from rest and the block because of gravity obviously goes down moving the block b up you got to find the speed of a after it moves the distance of 3 feet okay so again let's start with the free body diagram okay so if we assume that the tension in this Okay, we have multiple options. We can use the tension here, here, or here. The way I did it is I chose the tension to be uh, the one in this string. That's T. So I'm going to draw a free body diagram of A. The tension. Uh, there is a normal force, mass times gravity. and of course there is friction so friction opposes motion since it's going down friction force is going to act in this direction uh let's draw a free body diagram for this pulley okay t is acting opposite to that since it's an inextensible well this is massless the tension will divide itself into two parts so that the sum is t and then finally i draw a free body diagram for b so since this is t by 2 this is also going to be t divided by 2 because the string is inextensible and there's no mass on the pulley so t divided by 2 then m p g okay so that is those are the free body diagrams now in this case you also need to relate the motions of a and b right remember you did it in kinematics first problems in pulleys so you do find how motion of a is related to b because when you find energy that's what you would need so i'm going to assume again this is going back to the first chapter we did assume a, a datum choose x a uh, choose x b and then try to find a relation between the length and x and xb so length of the string is xa and this distance is going to be fixed let's call this distance d okay that's not going to change when this thing moves d is going to be fixed so xa plus xa minus d okay so that gives me the length of this string here all the way from here back to there so from here all the way there plus x b is constant right so then if i differentiate i get x a dot well 2 x a dot is minus x b dot okay i'm out of time the, the only thing which is left is i need to write the principle of work and energy 
So I'm going to come. If you can give me two minutes, I can finish this. If you want to leave, then I can stop right now and post this. You want to just do it? OK, so give me two minutes. I'll, I'll, do, I'll finish this. So principle of work energy is T1 plus U12 equals T2. OK, the, now you have the choice of putting the energy whatever you like. So in this case, I'm going to use the total energy of the system. OK, it will involve both the blocks, A and B. So, uh, so you want to is the work done by it's going to be the work done due to friction, work done by MAG, MBG, and so on. So, uh, MAG sine theta because that's the force acting in this direction. That's MAG sine theta times, uh, so MAG sine theta acts downwards, right? And the displacement of A is downwards, means the force, the work done by that force is going to be positive. So this is times XA. So I'll call it delta XA. Uh, the friction force acts, FF acts upwards, but the displacement is downwards. So the work done by friction force is negative. So negative FF uh, delta XA, okay? Then the mass MB, it moves upwards, but MG acts downwards. So the net work done is negative because displacement is opposite to the direction of force. So it's minus MBG times delta XB. Uh, the initial energy, T1 is, the initial energy is zero, it's starting from rest. T2 is the final energy. So this thing has final kinetic energy. So it's going to have, uh, both of these masses will have a velocity. OK, so what I have here is I've got all the things here. What I'm only missing now is how, to, how do I write delta xa, delta xp. So it turns out that uh, xa, if you look at this expression here, So xa dot is half xb dot, OK? So you can write xa in terms of xb. And I have delta xa and delta xb. So what I'm given is delta x. You can see this 3 feet. I'm given delta xa is 3 feet. So delta xb is going to be 2 times delta xa. So this is going to be 2 times delta xa in the negative sign. So it's going to be minus 6 feet. So you know delta xa, delta xa, delta xb from this. OK, uh, everything else is known. The only unknown, only unknown is delta x, sorry, x dot b, which is actually one of the things which is asked. So it's one equation, one unknown, x dot b, you can solve it. So I'm going to post uh, the solution, uh, the whole thing, and you can, you can look through it.